So the the question was why why do we need to prepare, wasn't it? Yes. Um, why do students? And I asked you. Um, I mean, we should probably start again from the top. Yes. Yes. That um, you know, you sent me a couple of questions earlier in the week that you thought we should discuss, which are really good questions and very relevant to um, you know how ELT kind of works and, and the whole the focus of these these discussions is to explode the myth of ELT and I mean I can't really thinking about it I should probably say that that this this whole thing the podcast was inspired by a post by uh, a long time sort of upper echelon ELT expert, a guy called Graham Stanley, who's worked for the British Council for many, many years. I've never met him, but I've seen him online and read a lot of stuff and interacted a bit. And he posted a link from Cambridge University Press from 2018, which is called How Long Does It Take to Learn a Foreign Language? And it's it's a table that shows uh, each level, A1, A2, B1, B2, and the number of hours Cambridge University estimate it takes to get to that level. And there's also um, the hours for a low motivated teenager. <laughs> uh, and we've probably met a few of those. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it kind of, when I saw this post, I got quite excited because I was like, oh, wow, I hadn't seen that before. And my God, they've they've pulled the curtain back. <laughs> yeah. So someone at Cambridge. Ill advisedly, in my view, if they wanted to maintain their position as, you know, one of the big ELT publishers published that it takes 350 to go from a zero, so complete beginner level to B one would take three hundred and fifty to four hundred and ninety hours for a motivated adult. Which is completely crazy. Which is bonkers. And five hundred and thirty to six hundred and eighty for a low motivated teenager. Who who only studies because they're at school and they have no choice. Yeah. And then I thought Wow, in last summer school, EOT summer school, I did a little survey, an anonymous survey with a group of 45. And in that, I popped in this question, um, which is quite interesting, I think, and relevant to this, because it said, before the course, did you think in English before speaking English, or did you translate in your head? And 53% said they thought in English, and 46% said they translated. And then I put another question in. After the course, do you now think in English before you speak, or do you translate in your head still? And of those who previously thought in English, 67% now, no, though of those before who translated, sorry, of the 46% the who translated, 67% now thought in English. Which and is I, amazing. And, I, and I, I, I place a lot of store on the ability or the transition from translation to thinking in English. Because right. that's that's a clear sign that you've acquired the basic patterns of the language and you're comfortable with using them without thinking. Right. And that promotes fluency. That is the essence of fluency or the beginning of fluency. And you know, this 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 is kind of the the, the students who did this were all 16, 17, right? Mm. And they were all French and they'd all studied English in school for quite some time, as you would. Mm -hmm. And um, they did a 10 lesson EOT course on the streets of London 
which mm-hmm. began at A2 and finished at C2. So they, they 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 went they went. I deliberately did this as a bit of an experiment. They went from A two, a first lesson A two, to to a, a, an advanced stroke proficiency lesson on the last day. And they managed. And, and they all got there. That's incredible. Which which kind of blows a massive hole. <laughs> yeah. In in what Cambridge published in 2018 and people are still sharing and you know experienced you know revered figures in ELT you know as, as sharing he said Graham said he said I tend to trust the figures provided by Cambridge yeah I mean so so it's Your like authority. it's an amazing isn't it it's it's it's, mm. it's 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 an illustration of the kind of turgidity and the lack of efficacy of of what most the world studies and like you've said you know like i uh, before we tried to get going and we lost the connection you know people people know they need to practice but they don't know how to practice that's my view and yeah. and, and you you what did you say before you said that people try to practice or, or they think they can practice but then when you hear them doing it without preparation, they 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 regurgitate or they use the same forms of language and, and just go around in circles. Yeah, because uh, they're improvising. They're, they're not um, talking about anything specific. So they're pulling ideas and words out from any direction and it doesn't really... Um, go anywhere. I mean, maybe we have a conversation about about something in particular, but without preparation, the the uh, words that are used uh, and and the expressions and the way and the structure is all very Italian, mm. and, uh, because they're thinking and translating from Italian most of yeah. them. Yeah. And so, it, and it's been this has been like a, a massive. You know this, but it's been a, a a massive source of frustration to me over the years. That um, it seems to be a kind of conditioned response to the way people have been taught to understand or been told that they acquire a language that they learn to speak a second language. Um. Are you still there? Yeah, yeah, I'm listening. Yeah, um, and it, and it, and it's almost as this massive block. It's like it's like the the way that ELT has been taught and teachers trained and books published and courses put together has, in a sense, prevented people from acquiring language because of the way it's been taught. And so they become inculcated and, and 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 part of the doctrine. And this is this is like I mean I talked to you a while ago about these massive Facebook groups uh, that are you know called variously English speaking practice, practice speaking English, English conversation stuff like that. I just looked at one and it has two point three million learners in. And if you scroll down you'll just see people sharing, you know, screenshots of old materials, grammar based exercises and stuff like that. There's no actual speaking going on. And and it's kind of interesting in a way, um, because it kind of it kind of to me, you know, over the years, I had a long chat, like email correspondence with Stephen Krashen, who advocated, you know, comprehensible input lots of comprehensible input and reading and that eventually then you'll speak and i had this discussion with him and and kind of we 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 had slightly different angles he thought what i'd done with jane that's on the podcast um was amazing and wanted to know what i'd done with her Mm -hmm. and i said look you know she studied some language before she spoke did the speaking practice right and he was kind of like, oh, you know, you don't want to study any form, you know, la, 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 la. 
And I said, no, but but this this scaffolds the language. And scaffolding is a term that's used in ELT that has been used for a long time. And the way I understand it is that, you know, if you don't prepare, you aren't bringing new language that you want to use into your short term memory and then using successfully. And then through the success of using it from short term memory, you've got a better chance of getting it into long term memory, i.e. acquiring it. Yeah, and then and then if you listen to the to the recordings afterwards, it, it reinforces what you've learned. Exactly, exactly. Um, but you know, I, I I don't know if you've looked down the podcast, but I <laughs> I found a clip from years ago that that you you just explain what happens when you talk to people who just want to practice and haven't done any preparation or adequate preparation. And 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 years ago, what's the date? Fifteenth of March, twenty eleven. I put a post up that that says, "What happens when you don't prepare before you try to do some speaking practice?" Listen, and and I wrote in here. This is a classic example of a Chinese English girl. It's a girl called Amy, and she'd been trying to contact me on Skype to practice with me, but she didn't have any English out there materials. So I knew she she hadn't done any preparation. She's a classic person who just wanted to. To practice, you know, mm-hmm. and um, and eventually, I thought, okay, let's see how she does, and I picked up the call and recorded it, and it's really instructive because she starts off with the same stuff, you know, how are you? I have you got a wife? You know, la 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 la. Where are you from? And I just behave like you know, a guy on the other end of the phone, not a teacher, not someone who knows <laughs> what I know, just yeah. a just a person who's been called by someone who wants to talk to them. <laughs> yeah. And, and I just gave her a couple of one word answers to her questions, which were binary and required one or two word answers. Uh huh. And after about 25 seconds, it goes silent. Right. And I let the silence go for about 20, 30 seconds. Uh huh. And then, if I recall, I haven't listened to it, but I think at the end, I go, You see, you need to prepare before you speak. <laughs> and yeah. she said, Oh, yes. <laughs> and I asked her if I could use it as an example. And she was very kindly let me, you know, use the recording. And that's why it's on the podcast. Mm hmm. But that's just that's a classic example of of the fact that human beings and, and, and kind of think that they can just jump into a practice situation and 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 get out of it having gained something. But yeah, it's uh, that that's it. They don't actually benefit at all. They just reinforce what they already know which is pointless because if you're going to spend time with somebody who is there to help you make progress, then you have to collaborate. You have to do something to be able to take a step forward. Otherwise, you're staying in the same place. Exactly. So you have to introduce new grammatical forms that you don't habitually use and new vocabulary that you don't habitually use that's not in long-term memory, that's not acquired. And, And so you need to keep adding information i.e grammar structures that you don't use and vocab to your conversations as you go and if you get success with them then the psychological benefits of feeling better about yourself and your confidence grows and stuff like that and then you become less in, you know worried about making mistakes your anxiety level drops all of that it's 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 a you know it all contributes to the uh, improvement in fluency here here uh, i find that a lot of a lot of the the people i i am with are generally making the same mistakes and they have to unlearn a lot rather than um acquire they both like you said acquire new ways of of expressing themselves but also that involves unlearning a lot because they, you know, they just have this imprinting, which is 
the the sort of way that they talk in Italian and 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 that's the way it comes out in English, which um, is extremely um, like it's very different. It's just very different. Which goes on to the second question, which was, hold on, let me just get it up. Uh, why we don't correct them when they're talking. And I talked to you a while back. I think we had a good chat about this, about how I kind of work with people in terms of correction. And I explained to you that that when they're, like you said, using, you know, say Italian grammatical forms and da 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 da, da I won't correct explicitly. I will... If I don't understand, I'll say, sorry, I don't understand. Can you repeat that? And if I do slightly understand or I do understand, but the but it's it's not correct, I might feign. <laughs> Sometimes I feign misunderstanding. Yeah. Um, and then when they, you know, have another go, rejig it or if they don't get there. Sometimes they get there. Because then they'll start noticing and, and and bring in the correct form. But if they don't, I'll just use it myself and go, oh, you might want to say it like this. Or mm-hmm. reply using it. And then they have the recording of them making the mistakes and me not explicitly correcting them, going, no, you don't do it like that, you do it like this. But just using the process of negotiation of meaning and understanding to gently get them to notice the way it is normally said in English. Right, right. So it's not stamping on them. It's not It's not putting them down. It's kind of gently moving them to the correct usage. Yeah, because they, they often don't know which is that they're quite sure about what they're saying because it's it comes from the Italian and if it works in Italian why shouldn't it work in English yeah and everyone with a with a you know a different first language French Brazilian Portuguese Chinese Japanese will co-op bits of their own grammar Mm. when when they're at that level to try to piece it together to make something comprehensible yeah and that's why, you know, um, you know, everyone, everyone who's ever learnt a second language, because we're all individuals and we've all, you know, done it differently and we all think differently, does it differently. They all make slightly different mistakes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Be those grammatical or pronunciation, you know, yeah. uh, or both. So it's it's really. You know what we what 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 you and I do with EO with EOT when we have a conversation a learning conversation I call them with someone is uh, we provide conversation that gives them in a sense a mirror mm-hmm. to hear what they're saying how they're saying it and how it can be improved. Yeah. So it's feeding back the information. So I, I, I consider, you know, audio data, voice data like this we're recording. I, I, I consider speech as data in this mm-hmm. sense. And, and the brain, the human brain is a fantastic, it's well documented, brilliant pattern recognition device. And, and language is all about patterns of sounds that become attached to meaning Mm -hmm. and that equals comprehension and and so the more data you can usefully and in a properly structured way feed back to someone using the recordings the the quicker they will self-correct right you make it sound so simple. <laughs> well, it kind of is. I see it as really simple. I just see, you know, a brain 
it's it has a first language it's trying to learn a second language and speak a second language but it doesn't know really know where it's going wrong mm-hmm. and and it, it it will be trying to find the patterns and connect those patterns of sounds to meanings and if you can guide it and help it get into the right state mm-hmm cognitively then it's going to pick them up quicker and it's all about the quality of the data that you feed the brain does that make sense yeah to me it makes sense because i've heard you say this in different ways and i've read it uh for years now but um it it makes now it makes complete sense At, at the beginning it was really difficult for me to adapt to to English out there at the beginning. I didn't understand on earth what I was doing and what people were supposed to do. And um, I had that's, that's I, my fault. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't haven't, know. I, I haven't communicated this very well over twenty bloody years. <laughs> I mean, I I I, I used the, um, the the lessons at, at the first and second level, and and I was trying to follow the instructions mm-hmm. and uh, work with with people who were doing it for the first time with me. Mm-hmm. And and I told them, listen, this is new for me as well. So if you don't understand it, I I, I quite um, agree with you. It's not that sort of clear. It seem, doesn't seem to be that clear to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and then gradually I got the hang of it. And, and then I realized how fundamental it is, how incredibly important it is to do exactly what it says. And, and that's all. So... You know, I get people to to read the instructions and and to translate them because they ignore them normally and they just go mm. into an exercise and they do it wrong because they're just superficial very often. Yeah, and, yeah. And and think that it it's not really important. And there are some things that um, you can go over faster, or like I don't know, it doesn't matter that much. But on the other hand, if you're really careful with it, it does pr- produce results that, that are astounding because of what you just said before. And you know really bloody quickly if someone hasn't done the preparation when you're talking oh, yeah. to them, don't you? Oh, yeah. It, it's like it, it, it is something that I, I, I kind of go, oh, God. You know, because I immediately think, well, this is a waste of my time. Mm. You know. And there's that video of me and Peter, the the the, the lovely guy from Tanzania, when mm-hmm. he first started, and he, I knew he hadn't done it because he was busking, and and I, and I and I dropped the f word just to scare him, and uh, and the next time he'd done his homework, and boom, we were off. Yeah, yeah. And he improved brilliantly, you know. And it was just, it's just. It's amazing how many people think they can just practice, you know. It's quite yeah, astonishing. Because, yeah, because you 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 think you don't have time to prepare a lesson and that it's um it's as much as you can do to find an hour a week to do English, but you're not gonna get anywhere like that. It's have you not- heard the saying it just popped into my mind? Fail to prepare, prepare to fail. <laughs> No, I hadn't heard that that's one. A, that's a good one, isn't it? Like, yeah. And, and that is so true in this instance, in terms mm. of speaking, you know. And the other thing I'd say about speaking is, in, and the reason for using materials like EOT materials before you speak, is that if you are lucky enough as a learner to have someone to talk to who's a fluent English speaker, who's giving up their time to help you practice, you won't keep them very long, in my experience, if you haven't prepared, because you need something that's interesting, that stimulates them and want and gets them to want to talk about their life experiences or what they think of the topic, and doesn't go around in circles. Mm. So, because if you if you haven't prepared and you go around in circles and it's really boring, 
chances are they won't come back. So you have to nurture your speaking partner if you're doing it self-study or alone. You know, whereas like you or I can go, hey, you know, you haven't prepared, have you? It's it's a waste of my time. Go away, come back another day. Um, and sometimes people take that kind of, ooh, ooh, you know. It's but but if 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 you're trying to have a conversation, it has to be an interesting conversation. And, and and the level of interest and the and the topic and the new languages so that provides talking points and memorability so it all adds to the whole in terms of the quality going back to of the data that you listen to on the recording i you know. i have something to say about this um something different um i worked with a woman for a long time and she was really good because she prepared her lessons mm -hmm. and um, she got better, but not that quickly. Mm -hmm. And she but she was happy to continue because she could see that in any case, she felt more comfortable in different situations, mainly work. Yeah. So in the end, what happened is that we got through the whole thing mm -hmm. and started again at the beginning and I said you know she was wondering if what the point was and mm -hmm. I said listen it's going to be completely fine because all the conversations that we had the first time round were different were different anyway yeah. and yeah. your English wasn't that good and now you can add so much more yeah yeah to yeah. to to the same starting point in, yeah. in each uh, in each topic so it worked it was great and I can do that with everybody. That's a really good point. That's a really good point that, that you never have the same conversation twice. And if you're adding language and fluency, then every time you have that conversation, you can go back and have it again and you've developed and you have a different conversation, like you said. Yeah. So it's it's. It's kind of interesting, you know, I, I think we're, we, we, we've been teaching people or, you know, the powers that be have been teaching people in, a, in such a linear kind of um, formularized way grammatically, because it's all based on grammar, like the CFR, you know, different levels, being able to can do statements, I can use this, I can use that. Um, that's why when we when we created the materials and, and we just wanted to get people speaking and we'd had you know a couple of years of doing it on the streets and learning from that what we did and you might notice in some of the lower level lessons is we just what did what's what or in publishing terms the elt publishing is called chunking and we just chuck grammatical stuff in there that helps communication without explaining it right so it, because if you try and break it all down and put it in a in a in a in a a rigid linguistic rubric you're inhibiting conversation anyway because there there are bits that you need to be able to say something to be understood that you might not be at the right level for <laughs> you know so it's like so you have to kind of facilitate the communication and you don't need to know why that little grammatical structure is important to this piece of communication you just need to know that it it means this right you know? and and um, anyway if if people are interested in in grammar they can always have a look exactly exactly like, like like these these groups you know these big english groups on facebook with 2.3 million members they just hammer grammar 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 because that's the way they've been taught. And, and and like like, you know, what do you say to people who go, why is that like that when you're on a call? Um, I, I normally don't know. I mean, it's it's not a problem. It just is. And if you I'll like just, I'll, just, I'll just say Google it. <laughs> yeah, and if you like, we can have a look because I, I use a a grammar book to to show them if they if they want to know something specific but the why behind it maybe i don't know that the why behind it or why 
the, the whys and wherefores. I mean, you know, like like one of one of uh, our friends says, like Judy says, you know, English is crazy. Why is it? I don't know. It just is. Exactly. And and I think there's a lot of it's better now, I think, but they used the old days, you know, the whole the whole sort of culture of teaching is that the teacher knows everything and the teacher needs to be able to explain everything, or that's some kind of, you know, detrimental credibility thing on the behalf of the teacher but but it's okay to say look i don't know or even i'm not really interested you know <laughs> it doesn't matter go, go and look it up it doesn't matter <laughs> yeah you know it's 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 not going to make any difference it's no, exactly it just exactly. is it just is take it or leave it yeah so it's it's kind of interesting you know I, I, it, this whole thing about the failure to understand how to practice effectively is such a massive thing. Imagine if, imagine if those 2.3 million people in that Facebook group I just looked at who are all desperate to learn English and hammering the grammar. Imagine if, if they became, I mean, I mean, the, I was going to, I'll go back a step. All that stuff that they're posting, the, the screenshots and JPEGs of grammatical gap fills and stuff like that. They're all lifted and nicked from different course books and materials and stuff like that. That the publishing, ELT publishing world pumps out content. And and in the, I remember in the, like, you know, as the internet kind of got going, the publishers started sharing loads and loads of grammar sheets, gap fills, all kinds of stuff. So they used content online to drive people to the books. Mm -hmm. And the books are what they buy when they, they get a book included in their course, usually, or they have to buy the book to do the course. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's how they sell books and make shitloads of money. Mm -hmm. And so all these people posting these things on these massive Facebook groups are just kind of advertising CUP's course books that, by their own admission, don't help them to speak in a sensible time, <laughs> if at all. Right. You know? So it, it's 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 for me it's maddening. You know, the one of the most amazing things is when when you say to somebody, "Can you can you feel that that's right? You've just mm. said it right. Can you do you realize that you can feel that it's right? Mm. You know, on, on on when they when they get it right." And that's that's really fantastic when when somebody does begin to feel that it's right, because yeah. it, it it means they're going in the right direction and they can just increase on on in that sense, getting more of that feeling that what they're saying works. But that feeling, I think that feeling is 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 part of the psychological transition from translation to thinking in English. Yeah, yeah. And, and 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 over that kind of period, that bridge, um, their anxiety level drops. Mm -hmm. And and when their anxiety level drops, then they become more fluent and they start taking more risks with the language and they start incorporating language they didn't know they knew or could use, but was sitting in inactive long-term memory or as opposed to active long-term memory. Mm -hmm. And and so you know, it's like it's like what you just described. So people say they they feel that they're communicating better, and they got it right, and it, and it feels good. That's a positive affirmation, an intrinsic sort of internal affirmation that is motivating. Yeah. Because when they start feeling good, they start getting more motivated. So it's yeah. like a it's a self-fulfilling thing. Mm. And that's why I think, you know, once you get someone with these kids that, you know, we teach in the summer and all the people we've taught over the years and online, you've seen it all the time, is that someone who's been through school, university or whatever, or done, a, you know, three, four, five years of English conventional ELT, if you can get them, and we can most of the time, pretty much all the time, get them over that hurdle of 
translation to thinking in English and lower their anxiety level, which comes part and parcel, and they start feeling good, then because of all the language they've absorbed over the years through conventional teaching, that enables them to go from studying and, and putting into practice an A2 lesson up to a C2 lesson just eight lessons later. Right. So it's like a dam bursting. Yeah. I've seen, I've seen that so many times, and I don't know if you have. Well, I always tell people that at the beginning, what I want to do with them is help them consolidate what they've already learned, like bring mm -hmm. it, bring it up, bring it together. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, I like I like this idea of the dam bursting because it's it's a kind of a click. Something happens. Oh, it does. It does. I, uh, it, it's between lessons five and seven. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's when it happens. That's where it happens. Yeah. <laughs> I've said to, to Caprice, you know, loads of times in the summer, you know, when, when I put this together, this 10 lesson course from from yeah, A2 to C2, over 10 lessons, um, I said, look, explain to them that this is rapid and they'll never have done anything like it and it will get tough between five and seven. Mm. But if they get through that, they're gone. They're autonomous learners. And, it, and, and and they do it. Yeah, there's a lot of unusual vocabulary, a lot of um, different topics. It gets it gets much more challenging and much oh, more. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It gets, and that's it. And the more interesting it gets, the more interesting language they can use to practice with people, say on the street or on a call like this. And the more interesting responses they get, because the 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 higher you go, and the more interesting the topic and the language, the the more interesting responses you get from the other person talking to you because mm. they start sharing bits of their own life. Yeah. And then you get the human glue, the psychology of becoming friends. Mm -hmm. And that bonding, again, adds to the whole thing and yeah. creates memorability. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. <laughs>